Hello YouTube, Miyazaki Mansai here, Liverpool fan in Japan. And yes, Andre Trindade has just won the Copa Libertadores with Fluminense. But that's the thing, it's Andre Trindade. A lot of people call him Andre Trindade. That's wrong. Anyway, is he really the right signing for Liverpool FC? I watched the match. From what I saw, very intelligent player, tidy on the ball, great first touch. He collects the ball from deep as well. He can distribute the ball. He's kind of a metronome, a silky kind of technical player as well. But he does get stuck in and he really is mobile across the pitch. But he isn't the most pacey as well. The thing that strikes out about him is his game intelligence, his vision, his awareness. He seems to know where to put the ball that comes under the tactics and comes up with the coaching. However, is he the most defensively reliable? I don't know. He was bypassed a few times. A few bits of the play kind of caught him unaware as well. His off the ball seemed okay. Is he that defensive crunching monster that everyone's been asking for? Jao Paulinho, for example, at Fulham. Didn't see it. He's a feisty tackler. He gets in there. He's not afraid. He's brave. Is he as good as Lucas Leiva in the defensive position? Not convinced. Lucas Leiva was our last direct buy from the Brazilian league as far as I remember. He came as an attacking playmaker, but he was multifaceted and he's well-rounded and he's moulded into a kind of defensive midfield pivot. He could go box to box as well, but actually Benitez fancied him in that holding role. And so he proved what an effective buy. I love me some Lucas Leiva. Yes, lad. Boss lad. Anyway, Andre Trindade. Does it really make sense for us to go for him in, in January? His price tag will be elevated slightly. I know they're willing to sell him. They weren't willing to sell him back in the summer because he wanted to win the Copa de Libertadores, first time for Fluminense, and he managed to achieve that. Well done. It shows his passion. It shows his character. He's willing to go to the beyond the beyond with his club to make sure that they win the uh, the coveted trophy. And congratulations once again. They did that. His performance was excellent. The hug from the coach showed that, you know, it might be his departure, but they still have a lot of league games to play. Is it like seven or eight? And now that they've won as well, don't they have like the Club World Championship in December? So I would have thought that he would have had match practice. He'd be match fit on form, a month's rest, January transfer window, get him in. We've been courting him for a long time. It makes a lot of sense to get him in. But now he's not going to get any rest. He's going to go straight from a league where he's given it his all. He's won the cup. And he's going to try and win the Club World Cup as well. It's going to be very difficult, you know, with Man City in, in that competition as well. I think one of the Saudi teams are in there as well, right? Hence why they wanted Salah in the summer. No rest coming straight in. So no real kind of match preparation. No pre-season with, with Jurgen Klopp. I know it's easier to get South American talent now. And that's been a common criticism from Liverpool fans. Why haven't Liverpool sourced their talent directly from South America? You know, the Uruguays, the Argentinas, Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, etc. I think we were after Rodrigo back in the day, right? Before he chose Real Madrid when he was really, really young. I know we were after a lot of these kind of talented youngsters as well. I think there's a link to Vinicius back in the day. We're never going to get any of them. The pool of Real Madrid is too strong at that stage. I think we've got Alan was it Alan who we got but could never get a work permit defensive midfielder he was rated by the coaching staff at the time but we had to keep learning him out learning him out and never got the, the permit for him I don't think he made an appearance right Mark Gonzalez Chilean international Benitez famously said better than 50% of the league he should have said better than 80% of the league he might have been only better than 50% of the league he's crushing it in those veteran games now cultured left foot pacey absolutely pacey good looking lad as well but he just couldn't get the physicality and the kind of tactical awareness and a rapport with the team as well. Really excited about him, but uh, yeah, it was, wasn't the most successful signing. I, I think it's easier now, isn't it? Like the home office or someone determines the work permit criteria. And if you're over like 10 million or if you're in the 20, I don't know, high fees, you're more likely to get the sum. And also he's breaking into the Brazilian squad bit by bit. He's on the awareness map of many of the big elite clubs. I think Arsenal were linked with him as well. I think we've done the legwork in there, similar to how Chelsea did it for Caicedo. Liverpool have done it for Andre as well. But what's my point here? Andre coming in. So if we're in contention for league title, which we definitely are at the moment, three points behind the leaders, Tottenham, I think we're going to go all out in January transfer window to try to get back onto that perch because we have the squad, the ability, and the unknown factor, the wildcard factor. We can win any game on the day. And if we beat Man City away, that will be the big influx of motivation and belief in the squad, in the community, in the fan base, that we can really go and do something. And reinforcements in January, we could do it. But the reinforcements in January, it's unlikely to go straight into the first team, like Lucho Diaz, because obviously absolute quality, played a similar style, come straight in and to rub it in the faces of Tottenham again. You know, Daniel Levy's little letter to John W. Henry. Oh my God, oh, you used to stole my Lucho. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and John W. Henry like what they smoking over there that stadium <laughs> uh, anyway I haven't actually given you my opinion on FSG yet I'll do a video on that on that very very shortly but Andre Trindade 
Reminds me very much of McAllister in number six, and he's definitely not better than McAllister, who has primarily proven a World Cup winner, plays alongside Messi, and doesn't miss a trick for Argentina or for Liverpool, for that matter. I think McAllister is a very effective number six, and if you saw him in Brighton as well, he often was in that double pivot with Caicedo, rotating the ball around, because Caicedo, the roaming destroyer, McAllister being the central distributor. And remember how we had Mascherano and Alonso as well? It's not Mascherano in the centre of the midfield conundrum. It's Alonso building the tempo, being the metronome, dictating the play, because Mascherano was a roaming destroyer, predominantly from the left, because that allowed Gerard to be on the right. And also, Gerard is a little bit tactically indisciplined holding position. So a lot of the time, Alonso and Mascherano formed that double pivot in front of the defence to hold the, hold that unit tight, which is what Benitez wanted. Tight, tight, tight. The square, right? The square was further back in Klopp's formation. The square is further forward in a 3-4-3 when it's in a transition from Trent puts him in that position. But Benitez had the square further back with the two central defensive partnerships tight and Alonso and Mascherano within, within, within that sphere of play. Mascherano roams, so Alonso pivots to make himself a passing option in the passing lanes. What I noticed from Andre Trindade as well is he drops deeper than the defensive line. He drops really, really deep to pick up the ball. Now, in the Premier League, you don't see that tactic so much and for very good reason because opposition is pressed very, very high. So what are you doing with Andre back there when they can push the forward line all the way onto that defensive third? Then you look at the first layer and the, the passing range that the lads got. You're looking at the kind of right mid, left mid kind of half space positions. That's probably the furthest that he's going to ping a ball because the longer the ball distributes, the more time they have to settle into the defensive line. It doesn't make much sense. So Andre is not going to do that in the Liverpool lineup. And I don't think Klopp will trust him in the sixth position straight away because Klopp does not trust players in the sixth position straight away. Look at Fabinho, look at Endo, any player in that kind of position, even Bacetic, right? He doesn't play him in the sixth. He plays him in the right-sided eight, dropping back into six as a double pivot. So for Andre to come into January... You're expecting him to have at least a month of settling, tactical awareness, potential language barrier as well, building up the connection and chemistry with the teammates. But then what about Thiago Alcantara, who's going to be fit in January again? And Thiago Alcantara, when he's on form, on the ball, I know many people have got their opinions, sell him. You can't just sell a player like that. It just doesn't work like that. Get rid of him. No, you're going to lose an asset, a valuable asset, who plays tic tac with Lucho Diaz in training as well. They enjoy each other's company. He is that leadership, motivational quality, and on-the-ball quality, and knows our system, and has a part to play. Don't discount players just because you haven't seen them for a while. He is always undoubted quality. Even if it only makes a handful of appearances, it'll be effective and well-utilised because we have a contract with him. And the fact that you've got Thiago in your squad as well. How can you not enjoy him play? My goodness, how long has it been since you have an absolute maestro, right? With the world at his fingertips when he wants to, when he's on form, he can break the lines of the pass. Appreciate the man. Anyway, I digress. Andre Trindade in January, I would love this boy to come. I think he is potentially a future star and metronome. He's not afraid to get stuck in, which is a very good attribute to see in Brazilians. Lucas Paqueta at West Ham doing the same thing. Silky, very comfortable. Just those intricate little touches to get that ball out of trouble into your teammate. I love it. I love it. Outside of but. Roulette shuffle outside. Either way, it's fantastic to see. And I love a bit of Brazilian flair in there. We've got that South American contingent. Darwin Nunes. What, and what can you say? Lucho Diaz, right? Alison Becker. we still got those Brazilians in there as well. It's all very good. And Andre would add to that. I think we've done the legwork. I think we will get him in. I think we need another defender in. A versatile defender who can cover the back line. And also step forward into defence because someone like Matip who can step forward into that defensive line is very, very effective. Konate's been doing it quite well as well. Van Dijk doesn't do it so much. Van Dijk prefers the long ping balls. But Andre, once again, effective signing. But is he really what we need to give us that push in January to win those few crucial games that will make the difference at the end of the season, especially being cheated at Spurs? I don't think he will. I think he will be a long-term prospect for the squad. He'll be effective. He'll have cameo appearances. He'll appear in the Cup and Europa League as well. And if he really stands out from the beginning, he might be trusted. But then again, a lot of people want to push McAllister up into that kind of progressive eight position, the left side eight position next to Soboslai. And he's very good there. He's very good there. He's very good in the 10. He's very good in the Masala position. He's very good as a full swinger as well. Dropping in and behind, allowing the four to rotate out wide, especially Gakpo and Nunes drifting out to the left. McAllister could do that as well. I've seen a few matches in Argentina where they played that system the poor pushes up into that 10 position very well in that instance because then they have the double 10 slot with Messi roaming freelance and they got whichever rotational striker they want up there anyway Andre he'll be a very good signing the cost will be a little bit more than we expect if we get a versatile defender who can cover for injuries and also be a long-term prospect there very very effective but 
I don't think he'll be that essential signing that goes straight into the sixth slot because Klopp will never trust a player that goes straight into the sixth slot unless unless he is someone who's prem proven, tactically aware and acute, provides the function that Klopp wants. And Klopp does not just want a pure destroyer like De Croire, who would just destroy and give a simple pass. He needs to break the first line with that ball like Endo did to Soboslai to crack it in against Leicester. Who can do that? I think Jao Pelinia is a very, very astute signing, very good sign. He would be someone who could come straight into that six. Even even you look internationally, like at Bayern Munich, right? Kimmich. If Kimmich, Joshua Kimmich, if he comes in, right? Sixth position, he's not the most trusted in that sixth position, which is why the Bayern fans were also asking for a dedicated destroyer, Jao Paulinha, to free up Kimmich to have that kind of right wing back half space defensive midfield role because from a right back position where he originated from into that defensive midfield position he's not the best tackler but he's a great all around player right so having that defensive pivot anchor that can destroy and pick him out through passing in the lines that'd be fantastic right which is why they're after Jao Pailinha that's why they didn't play Graven Birch because Graven Birch doesn't really do a double pivot which is why Klopp unleashes him to go wreck havoc in the in the latter third as well I know um there's a lot of kind of theory crafting here, but I really think that Andre would be signing not to be the predominant six and release McAllister. It would have to be someone like Jao Pelina to do that. But having said that, Andre would be a very effective option at the number eight. And Klopp likes his multifaceted midfielders as well, who can act as a double pivot, who can be offensive and defensively responsible in both transition phases, which is why Curtis Jones has picked a lot because he can drop into that half space. Soberslai is very effective at dropping that half space. Did not know that, but if we're under the cosh and towards the last stages of the game, he puts Soboslai deeper as opposed to forward because he can break the lines with a run and he's intelligent and he doesn't lose the ball. And he's got a good passing range as well. So, multifaceted midfielders, Andre, Thiago, Bacetic, McAllister, Soboslai, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Graven Birch, Wataru Ender. That, that's for me, is a complete set. You don't need a dedicated destroyer. They can all do bits of everything and really, really well. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Andre Trindade, I hope he comes to Liverpool, but I don't think he'll be our starting number six and as important and crucial for this particular season. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, drop a like, helps the video get seen. Till next time, guys. Jane, Miyazaki man, Ichiban. We get every single Premier League match live on Spo TV in Japan. So if you guys want to watch the watch alongs with a Miyazaki man side Liverpool fan in Japan, make sure you'd like and subscribe the video, help us get seen. Once we hit that criteria, 1,000 subs, then we'll begin. Motaru-san, fight!